Well, praise the Lord. Somebody say, I will bless the Lord and his praise, not my problem, but his praise will always be in my mouth. What a statement King David gave to us under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Mark Masson, I could imagine Morris Cirillo making that statement because this was a man who had the praises of God. He never talked about problems. He always talked praises to God. His mouth was filled. And if your mouth is always filled with the praises of God, then you have no possibility of losing the battle for your tongue. Amen. And the word of God is so, pre so precious yeah. in our mouth. And you know, we live in a time where Everybody says, the Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord sure. says. But we can witness that when Dr. Serilo was opening his mouth, yeah. saying that the Lord says, it's because he had an encounter, mm. personal, intimate encounter with God, where God really talked to him and that his word were full of life and full of power and full of praise. And that's what we want to achieve through this teaching. I want to achieve it in my life and I know you want to achieve it in your life. You know, Mark, I have to think that this may be, and I find it difficult to compare these School of Ministry messages, but this may be the most significant message that Brother Cirillo has left the body of Christ. It is an incredible message. I'm not hearing it in too many places. And listen, I'm not trying to compare. God has different callings and different gifts. God raised up Morris Cirillo, the age of two, as an orphan. He was raised in a Jewish Orthodox orphanage, had an experience at the age of 14 and a half where he was taken into the heavens and he had an experience and an encounter with the glory of God and God called him as a young man in a very unique way. And yes, he was anointed to be a prophet to the nations. Not everybody that says, thus saith the Lord, like Mark said, has the anointing and has the calling of God as a prophetic voice to say, thus saith the Lord. Morris Cirillo did. God called him as an apostle to the nations. And so as we receive this message, and today, I tell you, you cannot miss today, the rest of this week. Brother Srillo is gonna say something to us today. He's gonna to say it's time to set a watch over your mouth, to set a watch over your tongue. He's gonna to remind us how that angel came from the very presence of God and met a young man by the name of Isaiah. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. And I declare that God is setting you up for a new season of his power, of his anointing. I want you to know something. There are some things that have died in your life. Just like Isaiah said that when King Uzziah died, things that were precious. And I want you to know something today. God is going to give you beauty for ashes. God is going to give you the oil of joy for mourning. And God is going to touch your lips. God is going to touch your mouth. I cannot wait for today's message. If you are ready, I want you to say, I am ready. I want you to say, I'm ready to set a guard over my mouth, but I need your help, Lord. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, Brother Srillo isn't trying to put some kind of pressure on your life. He's trying to show us how we can take pressure off of our life by pressing in to what we're about to hear today. So without any further ado, would you join us in welcoming once again, God's apostle and prophet to the nations, Dr. Morris Cirillo. God taught us two nights ago that if we're going to discipline our tongue, we're going to have to first recognize the areas in our life where we have sinned before him. We're going to have to recognize those areas in our life where we have sinned with our tongue. We're going to have to be willing to humble ourselves and repent and allow God to sanctify our tongue. 
the prophet Isaiah, let me read it to you from Isaiah 6, 5. When he received that great revelation of the holiness of God, he cried out, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When Isaiah saw God, when he received this revelation, he recognized himself as a man of unclean lips. Then you remember one of the seraphims took a coal from off of the altar and placed it on Isaiah's mouth, Isaiah 6, 7. And this is important. He didn't put it on his heart, didn't put it on his head, but he put it on his mouth. Isaiah 6, 7. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. The moment this live coal from off of the altar of God touched the lips of Isaiah. God considered him cleansed from his sin. One of the great secrets of spiritual warfare, if not the greatest beloved, is to be able to identify our enemy. That's why we go down here into the beyond the surface, down here into the cause. The tongue is one member of the body that is able, if uncontrolled, to contaminate and defile our entire body. James 3, 2 says, If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle his whole body. When that seraphim touched Isaiah's mouth, there was a good reason for that. He didn't touch his head, he didn't touch his hands, didn't touch any other part of his body. Sin, beloved, as we're going to find out tonight, is conceived in the heart and it's conceived in the mind. But the tongue is the major channel through which sin is expressed. Put that deep into your spirit. James 3, 5 and 6, listen to it. He compares the tongue to a fire. James speaking. In the New International Version, I'm reading it to you from that version because that's really the best for this particular verse. Likewise, James says, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts 
the whole person and sets the whole course of his life on fire and it itself, speaking of the tongue, is set on fire by hell. I'm going to say it again. One of the great secrets of spiritual warfare is to know the strategy of Satan. Sat Satan's strategy is to take our tongues and so set them on fire, to so inflame them that our entire life will be corrupted. Remember what Proverbs 18 says? Death and life are in the power of my tongue. We either speak cursing to this body, we either speak cursing into our circumstances, or we speak life. We either speak death or we speak blessing. When James 3, 6 talks about the tongue being a world of iniquity, and it talks about defiling the whole body and setting the course of nature on fire, it's referring to the entire life of an individual from the time he is born until the time he dies. We are in a constant battle for the tongue. James 3, 8, listen to it, says, the tongue is an unruly evil. It is full of deadly poison. What's the strategy of Satan? What's the objective of Satan? It's to take that tongue of yours and to use it to destroy you. Somebody say in this building tonight, the devil is a liar. That's why I tell you this has been a hard message to receive. Every time we yield our tongue to criticize, to backbite, to gossip, to slander, to spread discourse among other members of the body of Christ, we are yielding our tongues to Satan. And when we do, we are opening our entire body to be contaminated and to be defiled. Remember what the Holy Spirit has been telling us? Once we bring this part, this member of our body under submission, somebody say, Brother Srilo, it can't be done. I tell you, if you don't do it, the devil will. If you don't bring it under the submission and the control of the Holy Spirit, the devil will take it under his control. Once we take that tongue and we bring it under submission and under the control of the Holy Spirit, we are able, beloved, to rise up to this new position of discipline. Once we do that, we have our entire body under control. Somebody say the devil's a liar. 
the tongue, when you consider it, it's one of the smallest members of our body. But yet, it can determine the entire course of our life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. One of the smallest members, but it can determine the entire course of our life. God's bringing us to a new level of responsibility. Say responsibility. You know what that level of responsibility is? It's to set a guard. It's to set a watch. Set a watch. God is calling his end time people to stand guard. Brother, when a soldier stands guard over a garrison, he doesn't stand guard just in the morning. They don't just have afternoon watches. Brother, this watch has got to be a 24 hour a day watch. God's calling us to guard ourselves. God's calling us to set a watch. God's calling us to rise up to a new level of responsibility and put a guard over your tongue. Take control of it. First Peter 3.10, listen to it. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue. How many of you want good life and good days and set a guard. I don't think you're hearing me. Set a guard. Set a watch. Peter said we must Keep our tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. You know why you talk loose? Because you don't have your tongue under a guard. You know why you get sucked into backbiting and complaining? and fault finding and criticizing because you haven't got a guard set over your tongue but if you set a guard over your tongue you're not going to be sucked in by the devil you're going to think twice before you speak it's the strategy of satan to get control where that original sin took place. The image in man's life where God says we are created in his image is the willpower God gave us to choose. Adam took the control of his life like all those angels that fell with the devil and turned their allegiance from God to Satan and followed him in his rebellion against God. Adam did the same thing. He chose. That's why the Bible tells us to choose. You this day, who are you going to serve? God's put that ability in us. We're created in the image of God. The problem with most of us is we're walking around talking about our problems. Oh, dear 
Jesus. We're talking about our sicknesses. We're talking about our financial problems, what we can't do, what we don't do, why we can't do this, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. We don't realize we're speaking cursing into our circumstances. We're speaking cursing into our physical bodies. We're speaking cursing into our families. I want you to think about the words that are coming forth out of your mouth regarding your circumstances. What are you saying? Are we speaking cursing or blessing? Faith or doubt? Victory or defeat. And I want you to know something, beloved. In the name of Jesus, we can't get rid of doubt and we can't get rid of unbelief until we take control of our tongue. It's impossible. But if you can get that spiritual breakthrough, well, you can take control. It's like James says in the third chapter, in the third, fourth, and fifth verses. Listen to it. When we put bits. Now listen carefully. When we put bits into the mouths of horses. Anybody here like to ride horses? Let me see your hand. How many of you have ever ridden horses? Oh my. Then you'll relate to this scripture. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them do what? Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. We put it there to make them obey. We can turn the whole animal <laughs> by the bits we put in their mouth. James continues, or take ships as an example, he says. Although they are so large and they are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder. And wherever the pilot wants to go, that rudder steers the ship. James continues in the fifth verse, likewise the tongue is a small part of the body. It makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by such a small Now that word, bits, beloved, it's a very descriptive word. It's actually a noun. It's taken from the verb of the word called bridle. It refers to the reins of the whole bridle, not only just the bit. With that bit, that bridle, the whole bridle, we gain control of the horse's mouth and we make it turn in any direction we want it to turn by placing the pressure on that bit. The same 
with that rudder of a ship. Although this little member called the tongue is so small, determines the whole course of our life. And if we can control the tongue, if we can bridle it, if we can take it under control, we can control our entire body. Death, beloved, and life are in the power of my tongue. We've got to stop speaking forth cursings, beloved. Here's a paradox. You know, isn't it Strange. You watch Christians, you can see that on the one hand, they can come into meetings like this or go to their churches. They can praise God, they can bless Him with their tongues, but at the same time, the same mouth can come cursing, bitterness, fear doubt, lack, failure. James identified this. Let me read it to you. He's speaking in the third chapter, the ninth verse. Listen to it. Speaking about the tongue. With it we bless the Lord and Father. With it we curse men who were made in God's likeness. Have you had this problem, beloved? Out of the same mouth, John James says, comes forth blessing and cursing. These things, my brethren, ought not to be. Does a fountain send forth simultaneously from the same opening fresh water and bitter water? Can a fig tree, James says, my brethren, bear olives or grapevine or figs? Neither can a salt spring furnish fresh water. Is it no wonder the church cannot speak words of power? Is it no wonder that with the emphasis of all the truth that has been preached, and if any two of you on earth agree as touching any one thing, it shall be given of our Father which is in heaven, and people have been touching and shouting and nothing's been happening. Come on, James didn't write this to the ungodly. He wasn't talking to the sinner. He wasn't talking to the man in the street. He was talking and giving instruction to the church. This is a serious problem. You remember what the Holy Spirit said to us? We've identified a major factor that's keeping the fullness of the power of God and victory and the truth of the power of the word from being manifested in the lives of the church. 
Christians are using their tongues to worship God on one hand and to speak the word and pray for the sick. And on the other hand, they're cursing and they're using their tongue for bitternesses and for evils. And God's power cannot flow through an unclean vessel. It's a clean engine that delivers power. If the engine's not clean, it spits and sputters and it stagnates. I told you, beloved, this is a hard message. I'm not giving it to you because you need it. I'm giving it to you because God wants to change your life. He doesn't want you to sit here, beloved and then just walk out of here the same way that you came in. He wants this to take a hold of you until, brother, you win the battle. You win the battle. You win the battle. You win the battle. Well, somebody say, I am winning the battle over my tongue. Mark Masson, what a spiritual download from the prophet of God today. Amen, amen. And I declare with you, I am winning the battle of my tongue. And if God has sent a seraphim mm. with hot coals Come to on. touch the mouth of Isaiah, God is not respectable of person. Amen. He'll do it in my life. Amen. He'll do it in your life. And he'll do it in each one of your life because God wants his power to be released through his children. Amen. Mark, I love what Brother Srillo said, and I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this. We're not just going to stand here and try to do all of the talking because there is a battle over every one of our tongues. And he said this, we're going to have to be willing to humble ourselves and repent and allow God to sanctify our tongue. Isaiah said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. These are the words of Isaiah before he had this experience that you're having, that we're having together. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And the Bible says an angel came, as Mark said, and he laid this hot coal from the altar of God upon my mouth, Isaiah said, and said, lo, this has touched my lips. This is what the angel said and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. And so Father, we thank you today. Lord, there are serious men and women, young people that are like the woman with the issue of blood. They are after you, God. They are not after the crowd, but they are after you. And Lord, I thank you today Lord, that you would even send a coal, you would send an angel on assignment to Nigeria right now, to Kenya right now, to Ghana, to India, to Pakistan, to Europe, to the continents of the world, God, over 207 nations that are participating. God, you are God and we are not. Father, I ask that you would send fresh fire. God, I ask that you would send a new strength, God, to the body of Christ. God, I ask that you would send a fresh oil of your Holy Spirit's grace and power and confidence. And that God, you would take out of our mouth, God, everything that is harmful, everything that is not full of grace and that is not full of truth. And Lord, that you would put in our mouth your words of encouragement. God, your words of power. God, your words of confidence. God, your words of affirmation, your words of healing. And I declare to you, my brother, my sister, God is going to anoint your mouth and you're going to speak and healing, deliverance, yes. salvation, miracles will happen because God will honor his word that comes from your mouth. And so, Father, we declare today that you are who we say you are. God, you are who you say we are. And God, you are 
King. You are God. Yes, you are the Lord of our mouth. Yes, You're the Lord of our heart, the Lord of our mind, the Lord of our bodies. And Lord, you're setting us up for an incredible promotion. You're setting us up for an incredible victory. And so Lord, we're not gonna be weary in well-doing because we know in due season we will reap. We will not faint in Jesus' name. Yes, Father, thank you, Master, for that anointing. Yes. That spiritual accountability, yes. Father. Spiritual responsibility, Father. Father, we cannot do it by ourselves, but this is the anointing of God that breaks Thank the yoke you. in our life. Thank you, Lord. Spiritual discipline comes Thank on you, each and every one of us. And Thank Father, you, we use what you have given us, our will, Thank and we decide that our mouth, Father, will only be for your glory. Yes. Only, Father, to declare the word of the Lord. Oh, in Jesus' name, Father, we surrender to you. Oh, ah. We give you all the praise, Jesus. Yes, we set a watch on our mouth. Oh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. And we know, Father, that there is a pure stream of your word flowing into our hearts, Father, and that will go through our mouths to produce and to release all the resurrection power of God in the lives of those around us. For your glory, you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. Come on, somebody just go ahead and say, I will bless the Lord and his, and his praise shall continually, continually be, in my mouth. be in my mouth. Well, we love you today. Stay connected. You and I are winning the battle for our tongue. We'll see you tomorrow. On behalf of Teresa Cirillo, David Cirillo, our incredible team here at your beautiful Legacy International Center, on behalf of Mark and Don and Jerry, this is Greg Morrow reminding you that if God be for you, who can be against you? We'll see you next time, live from Legacy, in Jesus' name.